Hey, I'm sorry, yesterday. I didn't do my dispatch. The point is to try to be doing it regularly. And then I just went back to my old habits. I apologize to all my new viewers that didn't get to see what I, you know, they're like, hey, I'm a new viewer and there's not even anything to watch. This is the first video you've had a chance to watch, I bet. <coughs> so anyway, um, what I was thinking about today is something that, um, you know, I was taught as a working class kid. Um, I don't remember what I was doing around here last. Um... As a working class kid, you know, how, how you deal with police officers and everybody's, you know, worried in working class life, you know, your tail lights out, you're this and that. Uh, people are nervous and they also are nervous that, uh, you know, that uh, maybe something unfair will happen. They'll be in the wrong place at the wrong time or whatever. Um, and, you know, when I was younger, I was... Uh, you know, uh, long-haired and, you know, basically looking poor and, you know, uh, even after I started to work and made some money. Um, you know, this is a type that also can be hassled by the cops. And the thing with racism is that the people that want to hassle citizens, they get some excuses, you know. It's like when you see um, the white guys that get beaten up or killed, and I could show you a story or two. Um, they're usually, you know, homeless guys, um, mental health problems, uh, where, you know, again, it's just you can get people that want to be brutal can get away with uh, more with those people. They don't have to personally... Uh, have a grudge against that category. It's just that they know that category gets less protection. But anyway, the issue is what I was taught, and I think this stands the test of time and is a good thing, a good citizenry thing, is that cops have to put you in three categories. I don't know where this comes from. I think this comes from somewhere. Cops put you in three, one of three categories. And, you know, they kind of have to. They have to assess the situation with the most dangerous animal on earth, a man, uh, and so it's only natural that you find certain categories of reaction. And, you know, it's probably not just three and not everybody, you know, it's, I'm not, it's just a simplification, but it helps from the citizen's point of view. And basically, uh, that, that classification is that you're uh, a victim or... You know, I can think of exceptions to this right away. I'll say those two. Not exceptions, but extensions. Why? But um, a victim, I, now I'm not sure. Was it these other things? Pretty sure you're either a suspect, a victim, or a, a citizen, a bystander. Obviously, you know, there's going to be various subcategories, and maybe that doesn't even quite cut it. But the point is, from the citizen's point of view, that you... Um, I brought all those trees um, and the bamboo. From the citizen's point of view, you want to put yourself in the bystander citizen category that you are what they're there to protect, right? And uh, possibly your witness and the police is going to have to talk to you. You're a helpful citizen, for example. Um, and the reason that's a good thing is because it's not fake. It's like, do the things that a good citizen would do. You know, um, don't make the job of the cop any harder and stuff like that. However, that's just what you can try to do, right? Um, the cop's not necessarily going to buy that. And depending on, you know, where you are when they run, what their impre first impressions are and things, uh, you can easily be in another category. One time I was taking a leak off the side of the road, all long hair, tied eyes, and um, VW bug. And uh, the cops pulled over and they had their hands on their guns. And, and you know, oh, hey, what's going on? And there was a guy they said he was a long-haired hippie guy had, had held up some gas station or something and uh it's like what are you doing out here and i'm like uh you know because you're like 
I was peeing. Is that illegal? I'm going to get in trouble with that. And before I could answer that, the cop was like, you're taking a leak, right? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, okay. And um, that was from their willingness to be open-minded. And the thing about the racial aspect of this is, of course, there can be just people with racial grudges looking to get away with that specific kind of grudge. But it's mostly, you know, the fact that people more inclined to be suspicious or think of everybody in suspect mode. It is because of the racism. It is harder to, to put yourself. You don't have the same ability to put yourself. If you're a six foot, like I'm six, one and a half or whatever. If you're a six, one and a half African American man, uh, there's a lot of people still in this country that even if they think he might be innocent, they're not going to exactly just put you, boom, right over there in, in the citizen category, like some, you know, little old lady or something, where you're just permanently in the category that means you're going to be dealt with in the rougher, less citizenry ways. Even if it's, you know, the witness and bystander, you know, can be, get uh, a treatment that turns bad because if they think you're not being helpful um, and they they feel motivated to try to scare you so that's why um, you know I'm the kind of person that's eager to share information if like if somebody did some crime and something I'd totally be like yeah they went down this way and it's stuff like that but with police it's very difficult a proposition to just offer information and they I found they this is just something as I've grown older they don't want you when they when you start shoving information at them they think you're trying to paint a narrative and you're better off just letting the police officers ask for the information if the police officers are just gonna leave and it's like they didn't even think of asking you say hey officer there's something I wanted to tell you da 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 and um, again it's just to keep yourself in the good citizen thing and it, it's a little bit of role playing but it helps the police officer who's also just a citizen and a human being it helps them role play as good public servant right because the metaphors match in that case they don't have to play good cop bad cop dirty harry needs to break a few rules because you, you're even if they have that even if they, they've got unhealthy attitudes like that you don't have to interact with them uh, on those terms, right? So, um, I think there's uh, some, I don't like using these anymore. I like these lamps over here. I think there's some wisdom in that, and that could be helping a brother out to tell you. I like these kind of lamps now. But they're kind of, I gotta make more of them. So I'm slowly putting them in here. So anyway, I, uh, this is the latest place here. It's a overseas place built a castle, a uh, water place over the sea. I have a water wall, so you can't drive through there. There's a lever to turn that off. And I got an underwater room in there. So I spend a little time on this per week. An aquarium. Fish. I have one exotic fish that's not from this area. Not that, that's a salmon. Oh, I didn't die. Oh, there it is. Over there. Tropical fish. Oh, no need to bother him. He's in a boat. Yeah. No? There he is. A little robot fish. Just like Gary used to say, you know, virtuality is one of the palliatives that actually work pretty good. All right, that's my video for today. Dispatch, June 3rd, 2020.